Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create this timeline in Word with all of this text and images. So I'm going to open a new document and I've just got a default document here which is A4. So the first thing is to change the orientation of this page. So go up to Layout, Orientation, Landscape. And now what we're going to do for the lines across the centre of the page to dictate how many of those features we've got, we're going to insert a table. But first I'm just going to move my cursor down to roughly halfway down the page. Then go to Insert, Table. I'm going to have six columns and two rows. This way we can just use these centre markers here to indicate where our timeline start and stop. So we're just going to customise this table. So I'm going to select it, go to Table Layout. Then over here you can change all of your borders. So I've just changed my border colour to a dark grey using this icon here. Then I've also changed the border width to 3. And now I'm just going to select borders. I'm going to select no borders. Then I'm going to select inside borders only. And then I'm going to select the right border, which is this one, and the left border. Now to customise any of this, you just simply go to the relevant icon, change what you want to change, and then simply select the border lines from this menu here. So you can see it's not quite in the center, so I'm just going to move it down using my return key on my keyboard. Just select all of your images by clicking and dragging across them and then click insert at the bottom. My computer somehow hasn't come up with the relevant menu bar, so I'm just gonna to have to drag and drop mine in, which again is something that you can do if you just open up all the files. So when you open up your images and insert multiple images, you can see if I scroll out that they've all gone across all of your document and spread out and come in very, very large. So what you need to do is to click on one of these images, go up to picture format, go to wrap text and select in front of text and then reduce the size and then just keep clicking on each image and do exactly the same. Just click in front of text and reduce the size. So now we've got all of these images inserted, you can see they're all different ratios and different sizes. So in order that we can make sure that these are correctly spaced out and they look cohesive, then there's a few things that we can do to ensure that they work in this timeline. The first thing is we need to make sure that the photograph runs from this marker here across one and a half of these markers is that's how the original timeline worked. So we can line this image up with that first marker here, and then we can just reduce the size of it to a, roughly about halfway across this one here. And then what we can do is select it, make sure you're on picture format, and just go over here and look at these dimensions here. We've got 4.6, which is the height, 6.14, which is the width. So if we make sure that all of our images are 6.14, then I'm just going to move it up. So if you're happy that this is the size of your image, we need to go across to this one here. The first thing we need to do with this one is correct the height. So we're going to go to 4.6 here, which was the height. And then in order to make sure that it's the 6.14 here, we're going to have to crop it. So if we select the crop tool, and as we drag it to the left, you can see the width is changing. We need to take that to 6.14. There we go. Then you can move the picture so that the main element of the picture is in the shot. And then once you're happy, press Enter and that image will be exactly the same as this image. Now don't worry too much about the alignment because we will come back and sort that out at the end. With this one here you can see this is a portrait image so once again we're going to make sure that the width here is 6.14 so we're going to just paste in that 6.14 and press enter and now what we need to do is just to make sure it's the same height as this image here so again, we'll go back to the crop tool and then we'll just bring the bottom or the top up or down. And as we do so, 
you see the height changing. We need to take that to 4.6, which is our original image. And again, move this image to exactly where you want it, showing the relevant topic. Then just press enter. And again, that image is now exactly the same size as the other ones. So it does mean that you do have to crop, but generally you can get in the relevant information. So now I'm going to speed up the video, complete these images, and then come back and show you how to put in your text, align it all, and put in the background. So the next thing is the text boxes. So go to Insert, Text Box, click on the drop down, select all text box, click and draw out a text box, roughly the size of this width here. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to show you, you can move these left and right. But if you start to move them and then press down your Alt key, it will smooth out that slightly jagged action. And then you can make it exactly the size you want. So for me, you can either go halfway between this or a full width, it's up to you. I might actually go a full width like this. And then if we go up and check the dimensions, you can see the width is 4.17. You can change the height as well, depending on the text that you've got, that's completely up to you. So I'm gonna make this simple and make that 3.50. But it's important that this remains as 4.17. But the great thing about these text boxes is I can customize this first text box and then I can simply copy and paste it. So I don't have to worry too much about those dimensions. So I'm going to insert some text, just double click inside the text box. The first thing I'm going to do is to just put in my date and then press the return key. I'm just going to go and grab some text. So you can see I've spaced out this, but I don't necessarily want this amount of space between the text. I can make this text box a little bit smaller if I want to. And I can reduce this gap here by simply reducing the font size. I can do that using decrease font size. Just keep clicking on it. You can see the font size reduces here. It just makes that space a little bit smaller. And that just gives us a little bit more overall space. Now you may want to reduce the size of your text here. You can select it and again, reduce the size of it. I've already gone down to a font of nine, which I think is small enough. I can make this date a little bit bigger just to make it stand out a little bit more. If I deselect this box, you can see we've got now a black borderline and a white insert behind that. Now to customize it, select it and go to shape format. And these two icons, you can customize the borderline and the fill color. If I go up to shape outline, you can change the color, but I'm going to select no outline and you can change the middle color here. Now, generally, I like to go for a darker color with white writing. So what I can do is select it, go to shape fill. Now you can select from any of these colors or click on more fill colors. You then have the option of this color wheel here, which you can move around this little cursor and match up some colors. Now, what you really need to think about is matching your color to a color in your image and make it a darker color. So it might be one of these browns here or these darker colors up here. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have this eyedropper tool, this is going to make it really easy for you. So click on the eyedropper tool. You can move it anywhere around the image. I'm just going to move it to the back here and click on one of these darker colors here. Your color will show up in this box here. Then just press OK and Word will automatically turn your text white because of the dark background. So then once you're happy with that text and with the box and all the alignment around it, if you're not, select it, go to shape format and go to format pane, then select this icon here. And this deals with all of the border lines and margins inside that box. So if you feel that this text is a bit close to the edge, then just go to left margin and just keep clicking up and you can see that the text is moving over to the right. You can do it with the top margin as well if you feel it's a little too close. And the bottom margin, you simply just pull down the bottom of the box there. And again, hold down that Alt key to smooth out that action so you're happy with exactly where it is. Now it's really important that you customize this box first because then we're gonna copy and paste it. 
And once you've copied and pasted, if there's any alterations you need to make, you need to make it to each individual box and it just makes it a little bit more time consuming. So make sure you've got all of your alterations correct in this first box. Now we're going to copy and paste it. So select it, hold down your Alter Option key and paste it across. That's the quickest and simple way. I'm sure many of you know how to copy and paste. And we're just going to make two more. Deselect them both, reselect this one and move, and move this one as well. Alignment I'm going to do at the very end. This is the point at which you make adjustments to your text and to the color. So once again, I'm going to select it, go to Shape Format, Shape Fill, more fill colors and adjust my color. So now I'm going to go through all of them, adjusting the color. I'll speed up the video. Then I'm going to come back, show you how to align everything and put in the background. So once you're happy with all of your colors, we're just going to align everything up. So select all of your images at the top by selecting one, hold down your command or control key, which allows you to select multiple items. Go to picture format, go to align, align to top, and then with these at the bottom, do exactly the same. Align, align to top. Now they're all perfectly lined up to the top. Then we're going to do the same with these as well. Align, align to top. And with these, align to top. So now we can see that there is a gap between all of these here and we want to make that consistent with the gap between these two and these two and these two. So now these three are selected, go to group and select group and now we can just move these down so that they match the distance, this gap here. So once again start moving them then hold your alt key down and then you can smooth out that action which allows you to be a little bit more precise. Once you're happy, just go back and ungroup them. And now what you need to do is to make sure that each of your elements are lined up. So select one, hold down the command or control key and select the other one. Align, align to right, group and select group. Again with this one and this one, align, align to right and then group. So just go through and do exactly the same for all of them. So now what we need to do is make sure that all of these are perfectly lined up here. So if we just scroll through each one, you can see this one's not quite lined up. So select it, begin to move it left or right, hold down the Alt key and smooth out the action. Then with this one, do the same, begin to move it and then align it. So now they're lined up with their relevant space. We just need to select them all at the bottom here. Go to picture or shape format, it doesn't matter. Go to align and select align to bottom. That will just make sure they're all lined up at the bottom here. Then go to group and select group. Now that's all one group at the bottom. Do exactly the same with the top. Align, this time align to top, group, so that's now all one grouped. And if we just zoom out, you can see that the distance between the line and your group is different for both of them. So if we just deselect everything, you can see that this the line across the middle is not quite in the center of the page. So if you just click anyway, you can see your cursor's over here and just press the return key, select the top group, and then you can use your arrow keys. Don't use your mouse because it's all lined up. You can just use your mouse key to move it down and then you can use your mouse key, sorry, your arrow key to move this up. Once you're happy, we can go ahead and put the background in. So go to insert, shapes, click on the square and then click and draw out a rectangle that covers your entire page. Then select it and go to shape format and go over to format pane. Go to the bucket icon, click on the drop down and go to fill then go to gradient fill. What we need to do is to make sure when you go to type, it goes to radial. Then in direction, you need to pick the center one. You can't quite see it because it's off my page, but click the center one. 
Then go to the stops here, click on this one and change the colour to any colour you like. I've chosen white. Do the same with this one. And then you can click on grey or another colour, it's up to you. I've chosen grey. And then once you've got your gradient the way you want it, you can move these sliders and you can see how that will adjust my background. Then go to send backwards and click center back. Whilst the pictures can show, you can see now we can't see the bar across the middle. So go to wrap text and select behind text, which will send that background behind the text or the table. Then if you want to, you can adjust the transparency and you can also adjust your slider and you can make other adjustments if you don't like the radial, the direction or the colors. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.